Rick and Libby Libby are nature lovers through and through. I love that. I love putting the kayak in and just, and wondering, what am I going to find today? What's going to happen when I paddle around that corner? Mm. You know, what am I going to see? <laughs> what am I going to be able to photograph? Just that whole wondering and, again, the mystery of it, right? I love, love that. that more than anything. When we're out there with these animals, we're just, we're just so honored to be in their presence. And lucky for their followers, they're also skilled with a camera bringing bobcats, loons, bears, birds, and of course moose into homes across the world with their outstanding photos and videos of animals that very few ever get to see. Then I have to say my favorite animal now is the moose because um, there, it's just, you don't just walk up to them and start photographing. You have to work to get to them, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Rick, the moose man, has been at this for a long time. We last caught up with him in 2014, looking for loons and, of course, hoping to spot a moose. It's just so quiet. You can go anywhere. You can paddle in water that's only half a foot deep, and I can get into where the moose are quietly. The kayak is a valuable tool if you're trying to get close to moose, whether it's to photograph them or just spend time with them. Since then, wildlife junkie Libby has joined the Moose Man team, and together they're unstoppable. So we basically are self-junior biologists, self-trained junior biologists, <laughs> For anything that we come across and anything that we don't, we watch a lot of wildlife documentaries and, and we're just geeks when it comes to wildlife. That's, we That's, love it. It's our passion. Know. When there's a moose potential, <laughs> you know, at the other end of the lens, at the other end of that hike, we're going. We just, just love yeah. it. Recently, the team has pivoted their business model, going from 25 to 30 craft shows a year to harnessing their huge social media following. So it's a post every single day. We call it Moose and Coffee. And the Australia connections with these one. people, yeah. it's all over the world. People from Sweden, from ah. Italy, it's just from South America. Hi, I'm they're commenting from Brazil this morning. People are almost lockstep with us on our journey. They can't wait for the next installment. So it's as much fun for us now to share it as it is to create the content. And you know, it used to be all still photos. Right. But it's all about getting the picture. Now it's about getting the video. This past year, we've really gone back to our roots, which is moose. Um, on social media, they're, they're kind of all over it. And, oh, yeah, crazy you know, about moose. You know, as you well know, we did a lot with loons and the baby bears, and we still enjoy all that. But business-wise, we're yeah. pretty much focusing on moose. The wildlife photographers divide their time between their home in Andover and Alaska. Many, many of the big dominant bulls in our New Hampshire herd have died. Yeah. And we've lost them. And so the recovery is with new young animals that are, that are making it. You know, like way back years ago when we first talked, of course it was the, the moose up in Maine, good old Potbelly and Boss and all those old characters. But that really, it had, it's still the same. Now it's in Alaska, we have Grumpy, we have Mr. T, we have, and it's all yeah. these characters. King James, a few years ago, he was the biggest bull there, one of our favorites. And now he is, you know, he's still alive, but he's not made he anymore. He partake in the rut. He's just not even a player at all. And to watch him climb to the top of the Moose Mountain, you know, and stay there for a long time. And then eventually, of course, the Moose's life, that's the way it goes with them. For Rick and Libby, it isn't just about getting that photo. It's about walking in the footsteps of the animals they so admire. It is such a thrill to get binoculars out and see a little dot on the horizon and go there and go there to go oh. find that animal and then photograph it and video it. And when I say go find it, it's not a matter of they're waiting out on the trail for you. We they're not. like it, but it's not just the moose. It's where the moose live. It's the quietness of their lives, the tranquility as they go about their day. 
um, and the fog, the early modern fog, the mystery, the mystery of the fog, um, the kayaking. So it's all that is one for me. And it's so much fun because we read their body language, they understand ours, we know their intention and they, they've come to understand ours. This time of the year, Rick and Libby also love to add bobcats to their adventures. Where, where I found them is a winter den. She doesn't live there, it's not the natal den, not where she has the kids. But she comes there for the winter because there's a food source nearby. Mm. We've been able to document these animals at home, at their leisure, in the middle of the day, <laughs> hanging around their house, doing what cats do. It's just oh, fascinating wonderful, stuff. And, wonderful. and a lot of photographic opportunities with them as they just kind of move about the den or go in the uh, surrounding areas nearby. It's, just amazing stuff. No matter how many adventures they go on or followers they have, this couple never loses sight of how grateful and humble they are to be able to document these animals. I always like to talk about staying humble and just just how good that feels to feel that way. Um, what, it, what it makes me feel like inside when I do feel that way. And I love for that to be how we put ourselves out there. In just in that manner. Um, and maybe teach, hey, maybe teach a kid that, or teach someone someone coming up, a young photographer, a budding photographer, a teenager, a young adult, and just kind of maybe put some of that thinking their way. And if, who knows, it might go, oh, wow, this, this is cool, <laughs> you know? That, that would make me happy.